Greetings everybody and welcome to my 7 days to die tutorial on explosives and how to use them. Now if you guys are ready for a ton of fun and watching tons of zombies get blown to smithereens, let's get right into it. Now uh, before we begin, of course, I'm going to go over all the stuff that you're going to need in order to be able to craft all of these things. Now there's many different types of explosives in the game, but all of them require one core component. And that is, you guessed it, gunpowder. Now in order to find gunpowder, you can either find it in junk, so if you come up to like any of these junk things around here, you might have a chance of finding gunpowder. Unfortunately we didn't, which uh, is fine. It's very rare to find uh, gunpowder in junk, but you can find it in small quantities just around the area. The other way to get gunpowder is to make it yourself, and the best way to make gunpowder yourself is to find coal and potassium nitrate. Now. If you're lucky like me and you're in a forest biome, so it can be the uh, regular forest or the pine forest, you can actually find coal and potassium on the surface. So I'm, I've actually gone on my map and marked out a location for both coal and potassium. So let's, uh, let's go there to each one right now and I'll be able to show you uh, each of the veins so you uh, know what to look out for. So now I've got to, uh, just going to uh, go into fly so I can uh, find the vein again because it's surrounded somewhere. So here is a coal vein and uh, these veins are actually very easy to mine. Each one of these things will give you 40 coal. So it will actually give you quite a lot. Usually they contain seven, sometimes eight of these things all together. So you can get between 280 and 300 coal just from one of these. And the good thing about the forest biome is they are uh, pretty much everywhere you will find these very commonly especially in a large forest biome so you have nothing to worry about finding coal now potassium i've also marked out on here so uh, let's go ahead over to this one and uh, let me just uh, take off so i can find where uh, find where it is again and there it is over here so uh, potassium also uh, this one sticks out like a sore thumb it's just uh, it's pretty much uh, the opposite color of coal pretty much so coal is black with white outlines and potassium is white with uh, these black outlines here and uh, this will give you exactly the same as coal so mining one of these will one block of this will give you 40 potassium nitrate now, once you've got your coal and potassium nitrate, you're going to want to combine them into gunpowder, and you can do that straight from your crafting inventory. So to actually craft up some gunpowder, you're going to need two lumps of coal and two uh, potassium nitrate powder, and that's going to give you one gunpowder. So you actually need to uh, put in double to get out the required amount of gunpowder, so it can get pretty expensive. Now, if you're struggling to find coal or potassium nitrate, don't worry, because there are other ways you can find it as well. So, uh, as you can see, I'm still in the forest, but I've actually found a uh, completely waterlogged cave system. And in the cave systems, you will always see these stalactites and stalagmites uh, just sticking up and down from the floor and the ceiling. Now, if you mine one of these, these will actually give you potassium nitrate. So it's very easy to get a lot of potassium if you actually run into a cave. Now, caves are quite rare, but I'm sure you'll definitely be finding one on your adventures through the zombie apocalypse. So uh, if you are struggling to find potassium, you can always look out for caves and then you're going to find a crap ton of it. Now, if you're struggling to find coal, on the other hand, you can also try the burnt forest biomes and various points of interest that feature these blocks that are right in front of me. Now, these and uh, this one over here and this one right here, these are cinder blocks. Now, don't step on them because they'll set you on fire. And if you're in the burnt forest, always keep an eye out for dogs because they can spawn here. But if you just take a stone axe of these things and chop them up, you'll get a varying amount of coal. For each one now usually it will give you between uh, one and four you can see that one only gave me three you can see that that one gave me a, a whole four coal as well and you get a little bit of wood as well so you can definitely get quite a lot of coal this way if it's a last ditch effort to find some now you can also find some of these blocks in points of interest notably uh, the forge house i believe will have one of the cinder blocks and the campsites will have them as well so definitely check out points of interest because you might just be able to build up a steady supply of coal by looting as well. Okay, so now that we've got our gunpowder, it's time to put it to use in the explosives. Now, there are actually four types of explosives in the game, and you can see that in my inventory, I've uh, grouped them in rows like this. So the first type of explosives you can get are these ones, which are thrown explosives. So essentially, with both of these, you light them with the secondary action key, and then you hold down the primary action key, and you throw it. Now, uh, make sure that when you're using these things, you don't just light it and leave it in your hand, uh, because 
because it will blow you up and it will kill you. So you do have to be a little bit careful with these things. Um, and I've actually thrown it incorrectly sometimes and nearly took myself out as well as zombies. But these are uh, especially very good for taking out large groups of zombies. So we're going to demonstrate that in just a sec. Now, uh, the pipe bomb is probably the first explosive you're going to be able to craft in the early game because uh, short iron pipes and... Uh, plant fibers and iron are very easy to uh, come across. Now let's go and have a look at the actual recipe for it so you can see just how much it will cost. So you can see I can actually build it. Um, so to actually get a short iron pipe here you can actually use forged iron. Now if you haven't got any forged iron you can still find short iron pipes, you can take cars apart or you can bash toilets with an axe to get one short iron pipe out of it as well. So the actual pipe bomb itself, let's uh, just uh, type that in here we go so the pipe bomb is very easy to craft it just takes one short iron pipe one plant fiber and then 10 gunpowder so essentially that's uh, 20 coal and 20 potassium nitrate so uh, if you manage to get like a vein of seven potassium nitrates then you can actually make 14 of these pipe bombs very very easily just from that which is pretty much a good amount to take out a big horde of zombies so you'll definitely be having fun with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go summon in some zombies and then we're going to test out how to use the thing so i'll be back in just a sec Alrighty guys, I have got a large group of zombies in the area. So here's how you use the pipe bomb and of course the uh, TNT. So what all you have to do, nice and easy, just light it with the secondary action key, hold down and love it. And as you can see, it's uh, done a bit of damage to these things. Now the closer you get it to the zombies, the more damage it's going to do. Like that, you can see that I managed to knock quite a few of them down. So you can see that it's very good for taking out groups of zombies. So let's uh, try again and throw that one in there. And there you go, it's managed to kill a good number of zombies right off the bat. So you can see how good this is at taking out hordes of zombies. And it's super fun as well. So let's just do it again. Come here, you. Oh, look at that, taking them down. So there's only the fat dude remaining. Now, uh, just for anyone who's interested, these zombies are modded ones. Um, and they come with the SDX mods. Um, so these aren't vanilla ones, but they pretty much operate exactly the same. So you will be seeing a bit of modded stuff in this tutorial. So let's see if we can take out these last three with some pipe bombs. So let's uh, go for that guy over there. Got him. And let's take out these two. See if we can get a bit of a name together. Oh, that was completely off. Oh, it, it does have a range on it though, so it will damage them a little bit. So make sure you step back. Down he goes. And finally, your turn, nurse. And you can, uh, you can literally love it a little bit. And down she goes. So the pipe bombs are great because they don't cause very much block damage, but they cause a very high amount of entity damage. Now the difference between that is block damage is how much damage it will do to the actual world, whereas entity damage is how much damage it's going to do to the zombies. So the higher the block damage, the quicker it's going to destroy the world. The higher the entity damage, the quicker it's going to kill the zombies. So that's the pipe bomb. So let's try with the sticks of dynamite and we'll see if there's any difference. Alright, here comes the second group of zombies. So this time we're going to try to stick a dynamite and see what this does. So here we go. So let's lob it in there and run the crap away. And you can see that the stick of dynamite causes a lot of block damage. So let's uh, throw this down at them. Here we go. And you can see that it's sending some of the asphalt flying. So let's throw that over here. So that is pretty cool. So you can see that dynamite does a lot more block damage than TNT. So let's uh, throw it in the crowd of them and that'll take some of them out. The good thing is as well with dynamite is although it's causing higher block damage, the blocks have got a higher chance of actually landing on the zombies and killing them as well. But the thing is you have to stay back a little bit because otherwise it's going to do a lot more damage to you as well. So you have to be careful. But this is super fun just taking out these zombies with dynamite. Boom! And down they go. And you can see that it's causing absolute devastation in the world. So let's take the nurse out. Did we get both? We got them both. Nice. And there's one more over there. So you can you can have some. There we go. Down you go. And oh, there's one in there. Let's uh, help her out a bit, shall we? There you go. <laughs> and down she goes. So you can see that the sticks of dynamite are much more powerful than the uh, than the pipe bombs. But let's have a look and see how much it costs to craft, because you're going to find that it's actually a lot more to craft these things. So uh, a stick of dynamite 
if I just type that in, if we just type stick, you can find it. A stick of dynamite will still cost you one plant fiber, but this time you need uh, 40 gunpowder. So you're going to need, uh, from those uh, veins of coal, you're going to need two whole blocks of coal and two whole blocks of potassium just to make one of these. Um, and that's a, that's a lot. So it's a very high price in terms of gunpowder. And you also need paper. Now, if you're struggling to find paper, you can find it in junk. And you can also find it in safes. You can find it in bookcases. You can scrap schematics for it. And you can find it in tills. So paper isn't too bad when you get a stock of it going. But you can see uh, just how much the dynamite does. And the actual use for dynamite instead of actually using it on zombies, is more for mining, because you can see the block damage is a ton higher. So what you can do is just chuck some down in a hole, have it blow up the hole, and you'll see that the hole gets a little bit deeper. And you can just repeat the process if you have a lot of dynamite, and just essentially start off your mine. So you'll see that eventually, as you go down, the hole is getting deeper. So you just chuck a couple down there, And you now have a nice easy way to start off a quick mine. Just make sure that blocks don't fly and land on you because they will damage you. And you can see that it makes the it like turns the uh, turns the ground a little bit black around the edge, which I think is quite cool. But you can see that if we put it on the stone, you'll see that it actually does quite a bit of damage to the stone as well. Now uh, this asphalt has um, 1,200, and the stone only has 500 uh, block hit points, so it will do a lot more damage to stone than it will to uh, the tarmac. So it will actually get through the stone pretty quickly once it's down there. Just make sure that you stand back when you're doing it because uh, otherwise uh, blocks are going to fall on your face. But you can very quickly see that I've made a huge hole in the ground just with a few sticks of dynamite. So it's very powerful. Alrighty guys, so now that we've covered the throne explosives, let's have a look at the second type of explosive available in the game, which are landmines. Now, landmines essentially are just exactly what they are. You put them on the ground, and as soon as something walks over it, including you, they will explode and deal a very, very heavy amount of damage. Now, there are four types of landmines available in the game, and you can see that there is the pressure plate mine, the tin landmine, the hubcap landmine and the air filter landmine. Now, the one that you can craft entirely yourself is the pressure plate mine. Now, this is a very easy one to craft and this will be the first one that we look at. However, the other three mines that you can see here actually require you to go out into the world and scavenge in order to be able to craft these things. And each of these require their respective parts. So the tin landmine requires the purple candy tins, the hubcap landmine requires the hubcap, which you can find in cars and in uh, working stiffs, I believe. And the air filter landmine, you need the car air filters. Now, we're going to take a look at each of these mines in turn, and we're going to see how much damage it does to a regular horde of zombies. So we're going to have 10 landmines and 10 zombies, and we're going to see if it can take all of them out. And then we're going to have a look and see how much it does to a feral zombie and we'll see how many mines it takes to take out a feral so uh, without any further ado let's go and look at the pressure plate mine and take a closer look Alrighty, the first one then is the pressure plate landmine. Now, in order to craft a pressure plate landmine, it's actually very cheap in terms of gunpowder. You only need three gunpowder and you'll get a whole landmine out of it, which is brilliant. You also need three scrap iron, which is very easy to find. You could just bash on rocks or if you've managed to find your own mine or just scrapped a few tins or just scrapped anything pretty much you can get a lot of iron very very quickly the hardest bit to find for the landmines is the duct tape now you can find duct tape in junk and on some of the uh, regular zombies but you can also make it yourself if you happen to have cotton you can turn those into cloth fragments and if you happen to have a beaker you can make glue at a campfire using bones so you'll need to uh, chop up a load of zombies and animals in order to uh, get enough duct tape in order to build these things so building them in uh, big numbers can be quite difficult however they are great because they are very easy to see and there's also a regular pressure plate as you can see over here which just takes three scrap iron that look exactly the same so if you're on a pvp world then they're not going to be able to tell if you like lay these around your base they're not going to be able to tell which of these are the landmines and which of these are the pressure plates because they look exactly the same so what we're going to do is we're going to get 10 regular zombies into the game and we are going to see if they can uh, survive 10 landmines so i'll be back when we've summoned them in 
Alrighty guys, here come our 10 victims, I mean willing participants. And you can see that as soon as one of these guys steps on it, it immediately takes them down. Now the fatties get stunned, but the good thing is these landmines have splash damage. So you can see that that one actually managed to take two of them out at once. And there you go, you can see that that's taken him straight down. So let's see if 10 landmines can kill all 10 of these zombies. So there's a few over here, so let's see if we can get some splash damage on these things. There we go. So that killed a few, and down he goes. Look at that, that was brilliant. So we've got a few landmines left, and this should be enough to kill this last one here. And boom! And you can see that it only took about eight of those landmines pretty much clumped together, and it killed all ten of those zombies. So that's the first test. So you can see they're pretty good at killing zombies. They will pretty much take them down immediately, apart from the fat ones, because they've got slightly more health. Now the next test we're going to run is we're going to line 20 of these up in a row and we're going to summon a feral zombie and we're going to see how many it takes to kill a feral because a feral has 2800 HP so by working out how many it takes to kill him then we'll be able to work out pretty much how much block damage uh, and entity damage these do. Um, now we know that it's going to be over 100 because you know, it took down these zombies pretty quick, and I believe the male ones have 150 hit points. The fat guys have about 200. So it's going to be somewhere between 100 and 200. So let's have a look and see how much entity damage they do when we use a feral zombie. So let's go and summon one in, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here comes our feral, and he's completely dodged the mines, the lucky bugger. Right, here we go. So there's two, and you can see that it's just stunned him a bit. And you can see that after four of these things, it's just knocked him down. Now, it hasn't killed him, he's just stunned, so he'll get back up any minute. But, this is great if you need to knock down a feral, because then you can do three times damage when he's fallen over. So there's eight so far, and you can see that it's about every four landmines, it's uh, knocking him down. So he's not happy, is he? This uh... There's nine. Right, let's uh, come back around this way and guide him over some more, shall we? So let's uh, kind of try and line him up a little bit. So he's uh, going a bit funny. There we go. So there's 11, and he's still standing after 11. So he's tough. So 12 landmines, it's knocked him down three times. So, yeah, he's getting knocked down a lot. So here we go. He's He should uh, come back around this one. If he dodges that one, uh, okay, it seems like he's gone a bit dazed and going all over the place. So that's 12. So can these kill him? Let's see. There's 14. So there's 15. Come on, Feral. I'm this way. I'm this way. You love landmines, right? And there we go. 16 of these landmines will kill one Feral zombie. So you can see that they're they're pretty powerful, and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do uh, 2800 divided by 16 in my head. I'm just gonna post the answer on the screen on to uh, roughly how much entity damage that means it's gonna be doing to uh, this guy. So uh, that is the pressure plate mine. So we're gonna now move on to the candy tin mine. Alrighty guys, the Tin Land Mine is a mine that you actually need to go out into the world and find one of the components for in order to craft it, and that is the Candy Tin Can. Now the Candy Tin Cans are relatively easy to find, just search through a lot of junk and you'll quite quickly acquire a good number of them. They're not overly common, but as long as you don't scrap them, you should be able to build up a good supply. Now the advantage with these mines is that it costs a third of the amount of gunpowder than it does to craft the pressure plate mine. You can see that it only takes one gunpowder, and it also only takes one iron as well. So once you've got the candy tin, getting the gunpowder and the iron is very easy. So once again, we're going to have a 10 landmines versus 10 regular zombies challenge, and then we're going to have uh, 20 landmines versus a feral, and we'll see if the candy tin mines are any better. Okay guys, here come our 10 victims into some candy tin mines. So let's see how much these do. So you can see that it took two to take out one of those survivor guys. And you can overall see that they're knocking them down, but not doing as much damage. So the candy tin mines are actually quite a bit weaker than the regular ones. Now, the fact that they're doing less damage to the zombies 
probably means that they're taking out a lot less of them. So you can see that there's one left, so let's see if this can take out a couple of them. Um, so you can see one of them's like kind of going really, really slow. So it does slow them down a good deal. Let's see if we can guide a few of these into one landmine and take them. There we go. So you can see that although these candy shin mines are easier to craft, overall they're less effective at taking out the zombies. So that's our first test. So let's try with a feral with 20 and see if 20 are going to be enough to take him out. All right, feral number two. So two landmines and it's of course stunned him a little bit, but let's see how many he can step over. So this time he's not been knocked down after four landmines. So uh, that's a bit of a concern, they're less powerful. Now he's uh, he's been a bit of a clever bugger and walking around these things. But you can see even after six of these landmines, he is still standing. Now I think he has been stunned, so we're just gonna have to uh, guide him around. Hey Farrell, I'm over here. Come on, come on, and this way. So he still hasn't been knocked down, which is uh, crazy after seven of these. So even after nine landmines, he's still not gone down. Now, there's 11. Can he be knocked down after 12? There we go. So it's actually taken a whole 12 landmines to knock this guy down. And you can see that it didn't knock him down for long. So the explosions on these things are a lot less powerful. But let's see if he can uh, get destroyed by 20 of them. You can see that he's uh, taken a bit of damage. Uh, okay, so he's been uh, he's been slowed down a little bit now. You can see he's limping. So it's doing a good job at weakening him. There we go. So after 18, so it looks like maybe every six it takes him down. So I'm guessing that it's not going to kill him in 20, and it's going to take about 24 to take him out. And there we go. You can see that all 20 landmines have been used up, and the feral is still coming at me. So in terms of uh, defenses, they're still pretty good at taking out the zombies, but they just do nothing uh, to take out a feral. A big number of these are just not going to take a feral down. Okay, the third landmine we're going to look at is the Hubcap landmine. Now, uh, the Hubcap landmine is uh, pretty much the same as the Candyton landmine in that you have to go out and find the Hubcaps in the world before you're able to actually craft the thing. Now, um, a Hubcap landmine is slightly more expensive than the Candyton landmine, and the parts are slightly harder to find as well. The hubcaps are slightly rarer to find than the candy tins because you can only find these in cars and in working stiffs crates. And uh, the uh, spawn chance of those when you're looking through those loot containers is pretty low. So you won't probably find too many hubcaps throughout your, uh, throughout your playthrough in the game. But what we're gonna do is the usual test. So 10 hubcaps versus 10 regular zombies. And then we're going to have 20 versus a feral. So here we go with 10 hubcaps versus 10 zombies. All right, here come the zombies for the hubcaps. And this guy's right in the front. And you can see that I don't know if that killed him or just stunned him. Let's see if he starts moving again. OK, so it took two of those mines to kill him outright. So here comes some others. And you can see, in this case, the splash the splash damage by these mines is a lot greater than the candy tin ones. So you can see that it actually managed to take out two or three together. And you can see that just by doing that, it's taken them out. So these mines are extremely good for splash damage, as you can see. So it's done quite a number on these zombies. And uh, it, compared to the pressure plate mines where we had uh, two remaining, these ones, we had three remaining. So in terms of having a very large group of zombies, these things are ideal for taking them out. So next test, let's have 20 of them versus a feral. All right, here we go with the feral on these uh, hubcap mines. So here we go. So lots of explosions. Here we go. You can see that actually uh, pushed him back quite a lot. Oh, he's not liking this. Look at this. Oh, wow. So it looks like it took four of those things and it knocked him down, which is pretty good. So let's see how many it's going to take to kill him. So here we go. So he's coming. Come on, Beryl. So it looks like eight of them have caused him to stop dead. So uh, it looks like it's going to be very similar to the pressure plate ones. But here he comes. So there's ten. Ten of them and he's still standing. So let's uh, guide him back round. He's, yeah, he's going to walk around that one. All right, let's guide him to these three and see how he does against the... Shall we? Come on, man. What are you made of? Okay, so uh, there's 12 down. So it looks like it might be about the same amount to uh, actually kill this guy. So there's 12. And there we go. Hang on, let me just make sure I'm doing my calculations. How many are left? One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Actually, no, this actually took him down in 14. So you can see that this actually does a little bit more damage than the pressure plate landmines. Not too much more, but it's got very good splash damage. So if you had a group of ferals just coming at you, I reckon these would be really good at taking them out. So not bad at all. Now the last mine we're going to look at is the air filter landmine. Now these things require car air filters to uh, actually craft them. And the car air filters can be found in cars. Um, you can't actually get them from taking cars apart, which I think would be really cool if the, the pimps added that. Um, you can also find them in the garage storage boxes and in working stiffs. However, the air filters are very, very rare, and I usually play on like very long extended days and things like that. And usually I've probably found about four, maybe less, by like day 21. So they're not very easy to find. However, they are very powerful. And you can see that in terms of iron and gunpowder costs, they cost exactly the same as the pressure plate one. So here we go. We're going to have uh, 10 versus 10 and then 20 versus a feral. And let's see how we do. Alrighty, here comes horde number three, apart from that one guy wandering off over there. So let's see how much they do. And you can see two of those took three of the tougher guys out. So here comes some more. Right, that other guy's catching up now. Oh, wow. So the fatty's got taken out by one of those things. And you can just see how much more damage this is doing to these zombies. And that one even stunned this guy from really far away. So I'm guessing one more of those will take him out. Now, I think if these guys had been in a tight knit group, it would have taken much less to take these guys out. But you can see that the blast radius on these air filter landmines is amazing. And you can see that it just decimates zombies within a few blocks of it, as well as the one standing right on top of it. So if you need something with wide blast radius and you've got a lot of zombies coming your way, I definitely recommend the air filter landmine. So next one, 20 versus a feral. And let's see how it does. And here comes our feral. So let's see if we can uh, guide him over some of these and how many are going to kill him. So three of them have pretty much stunned him, which is pretty awesome. So he's just been stopped in his tracks by three landmines, which is amazing. So there's five. So I guess 12. Let's see. So seven and he's stunned again. So maybe, maybe more like 14, but we'll see. So two more this way. So there's nine and is he down is he dead he is dead so it only took uh, nine of these air filter landmines to take out a feral that is amazing so these things uh must do just over 300 block damage each which is really cool as i said i'll post the actual values on here but you can see that the air filter landmines although they're very rare you're going to end up using a lot less of them to take out a feral zombie so that was amazing Alrighty guys, I'm now in my underground explosion test room and uh, we're going to use this room to uh, test how much block damage each of these land mines do. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a mine down and then we're going to shoot it which should cause it to explode. Now the blocks that I've got here are made out of the white adobe and these have a thousand HP each so it's going to be very easy to see how much radius the uh, the mine will do in damage and then how much block damage it will do overall. So I'm going to put down the uh, regular pressure plate one and then we're going to see how much it does. All right, the pressure plate one is down and I've got my sniper ready to shoot this thing, but I want to get back a little bit from it. So let me go down into uh, this little hallway that I've got set up here just so I can get a bit of distance between it and uh, myself. So here we go. So let's shoot this thing and see how much damage it does. All right, so now if we come over here, you can see that all of these blocks have taken a bit of damage. So let's get out um, a construction tool, like a hammer, and we should be able to see how much uh, damage each of these has done. So let's get a hammer out and let's see. So uh, let me just jump over here. So you can see that each of these has taken uh, six block damage each, apart from that one, which has taken slightly less. Um, these have also taken a little bit of block damage from the explosion as well, but not all of them, just maybe uh, maybe a couple of them have taken a very minor amount of block damage. But you can see that it's uh, it appears that some of the further away blocks have taken more damage than the ones closer to where the actual explosion was. But overall, it does about between six and... 10 block damage for the uh, air filter, not the air filter one, sorry, the uh, regular pressure plate landmine. You can see it does about between 6 and maybe 
10, 20 block damage. So not very much at all. So they won't be doing too much damage to your structures if you put them near your walls. However, I recommend putting them slightly away from your walls and on ground that you can easily repair. So I'd put them on, say, cobblestone or something because then it will be able to withstand the explosions and it will all be fine because then cobblestone is nice and easy to repair. So I'm going to repair this up and then we're going to come back with the candy tin landmine. Alrighty guys, I'm back, and you probably noticed that I've got uh, a bit less health than I did before, and that's because I actually managed to blow myself up when I was uh, trying to put the second mine down. Um, but anyway, we've now got the candy tin one set down there, and uh, I'm just backing up into my hole a little bit, and we are going to blow this thing up and see how much block damage it does. So uh, without any further ado, let's shoot this thing, and might need another, another shot on it. Let's just get a bit of zoom in. Here we go. No. There we go. So three shots, taking that out. And let's see how much block damage the candy tin mine managed to do. So the candy tin mine, as you can see, has done a little bit less block damage, actually. You can see that it's only done about two or so to the surrounding blocks. Um, and the actual radius of the damage is a lot less. Now, it has done two damage to this fence. So the radius of the last one was a lot greater, but you can see that this does a lot less block damage. The explosion isn't as powerful, but the block damage overall is a lot less. So you're looking at between uh, two and four, maybe five block damage each for a candy tin landmine compared to the pressure plate one. So if uh, if you really do need mines up against your walls, then I'd recommend going with the candy tin ones because they do a lot less damage than the pressure plate ones. So your base will last a lot longer if you use those near your walls. All right, now we've got the hubcap landmine. So uh, this one's looking beast. So let's go ahead and shoot this guy and see how much damage he does. So everything's repaired. Here we go. And wow. That had a very, very big explosion. I'm interested to see if that actually damaged the ceiling at all. Let's go and have a let's go and have a look and see how much it did. So you can see that these did about six damage to uh, all the blocks around here. So pretty much equivalent to the uh, the regular ones that you can craft yourself. And as you can see, it has done a little bit more damage to the blocks beyond the explosion radius. So you can see that the ones closer to it have actually taken less damage, and the ones further away have actually taken slightly more. Now, some of the fences are less damaged, but you can see the concrete in particular has taken a little bit more damage. Now I'm interested, has it... It has actually damaged the ceiling as well, which is uh, quite funny. So the ceiling directly above that also did manage to uh, take a bit of a beating from that landmine. So overall, this one, you're probably looking about the same damage as the uh, pressure plate landmine. So it's slightly more powerful and does the same amount of damage. Last but not least, we have got the air filter landmine. So let's go and blow this thing up and see how much damage it does to uh, the blocks. So here we go. No? Want another one? Yeah, of course. It there we go. Got it this time. And let's go and inspect the damage, shall we? So this one did quite a bit more damage. This one does a base of about 12 damage per block. So you can see that the actual damage is quite a lot more. So it's the base is 10 by looks of things. That's 990. And you can see that this concrete especially has taken quite a bit of damage. So this has taken nearly 50 ex outside the explosion radius. So concrete seems to be taking more damage than, uh, than the adobe does, which is quite interesting. So I'm not sure if that's intended or whether that's a bug. I'll have to test that. But you can see that it does quite a lot more block damage and the radius is consistently wider. Now, has it done any damage outside of this fence, I wonder? Let's have a look. It doesn't look like it. It looks like the fence has stopped the uh, the blast from going any wider. But yeah, it does have about a three block radius out. And as you can see, it's actually done quite a significant bit of damage to the ceiling as well, which is quite interesting. So uh, the actual radius on this landmine for block damage is a lot greater than the other ones. So I definitely recommend keeping these away from your walls because otherwise it's going to tear them down, especially if they're made of concrete for some reason, which is quite interesting. So now that we've looked at all the landmines, the third type of explosive I want to look at is the uh, placed down and triggered explosive. Now there are two types here, there's the gas barrel 
and there is the TNT. Now both of these are craftable so you can craft uh, all of these as normal and you don't really need to find too much in order to craft these things. Now the uh, gas barrel is going to require some scavenging and so is the TNT but you'll need different things for each. Now the gas barrel also requires a recipe to uh, to learn in order to unlock it so you need the uh, you need the gas can recipe in order to be able to craft these things. Now one of these gas barrels takes 600 gas cans but you don't have to worry about finding gas because the good thing is you can actually find them in the world. If you come to any old passing gas you'll find these just littered around so you can literally go up to them and just pick them up and then you will have one very powerful explosive. Now these things are powerful don't get close to them and uh, start punching them because they will blow up and they will insta kill you. But you can see just around this passing gas I've managed to find uh, just three laying around right there which is awesome. And I believe there are there are some inside the garage bit as well so uh, you can find them all over the shop. Now if you are short on gas and you need to make more barrels look in here because you can find some gas in these, uh, in these fuel pumps right here. And you can also uh, look in cars, sometimes they'll have gas. Working stiffs crates might sometimes have gas. And if you take cars apart with a wrench, you'll get a load of gas as well. So just by taking cars apart, you can pretty much make your own uh, makeshift explosives. Now, um, I have prepared a room inside my little uh, explosive uh, bomb shelter place so that we can actually test how big these explosions are. So uh, if we come past the room where I tested the mines, you can see that I've got another room where we are going to place the barrels in the middle. Once this concrete is all hardened up, I'm going to upgrade it to steel, and then we're going to see just how much damage these things can do. Because trust me, it is pretty high. But before we do that, let's go and see what their actual application is used for, which is mining. Alrighty guys, as you can see, I have pretty much just opened a little window out in my uh, first room so we can demonstrate how awesome these things are for doing mining. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm literally going to put one barrel, I've literally just dug straight ahead like this, and a good way to mine with these things is to just put the barrel right in there like that, and then I'm going to go stand back somewhere like over here. So I can see it from here, and it's... Uh, Definitely, uh, I've got visual on it, so that's good. So I'm going to get my sniper rifle, and the way you blow these up is you can either hit them from melee range, and they will explode if the, if you do enough damage to them, which is not the best way. The best way is to, of course, take them out of range. The sniper rifle makes a great weapon for doing this because you can just aim nice and accurately. And here we go. And you can see that if we go inside the window here and take a look. I don't think much of this concrete has taken damage, so let's get our hammer out and we'll see if the concrete has taken any kind of damage whatsoever. So you can see that none of this concrete actually took any damage, and uh, inside there, loads of stuff has been pretty much wrecked. So what this will do is it will clear out pretty much a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube, and then you can pretty much do whatever you like in that queue. So you can then obviously place more barrels in there. And the good thing is they actually chain. So I'm going to show you a nice little trick that you can use to make a vertical mine shaft very, very quickly. Alrighty guys, here is a pretty awesome thing you can do to make a vertical mine shaft really, really quickly. The first thing is literally just uh, dig straight down and let your character just fall into the hole and keep digging. And eventually, when you're down far enough, you'll start to hit some stone, like that. Once you hit stone, just take out your pickaxe and uh, pretty much keep going to either your desired depth or the number of barrels that you have. So I'm going to go down about 10 and then hopefully that'll be deep enough. And there we go. Now what you can do is you can nerd pole your way back to the top just by jumping and placing. So you can jump on these barrels and they won't explode so you don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and nerd pole our way all the way back up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come out and I'm going to place one barrel on the top like that so I can see it poking out. Now you're going to want to get very far away because these explosions will chain. It will cause a bit of lag on your computer obviously because it's voxel so it's got to calculate like all the blocks and things like that. But if you shoot the top one and stand way back you'll see that it sends blocks flying everywhere and it's pretty much gone all the way down and created you 
a very nice vertical mine shaft. Now you can put a ladder against it and get down to your desired depth. And it just looks amazing as well. Now bear in mind, this isn't cheap to do. Like, and it's going to summon screamers as well. These things will summon screamers uh, if you use a lot of them. So most likely, once you've done that, you're going to have a screamer on. But if you've got a sniper rifle, you can probably take her out before she gets to uh, the source of the noise. But you can see just how quickly I managed to dig a hole that deep now they as i said before it does an, a three by three by three damage but you can see now that it's actually done five by five by five um going down like five by five in a cube going down now why is this i'm not lying to you essentially what happens is once it's done the three by three damage the exposed rock then takes additional damage which destroys it and it then becomes a five by five now you can do this with TNT as well, although uh, I don't believe TNT can stack, and I fell down my own hole as usual. And the stuff down here will turn into destroy stone, which you can just get rid of very, very easily. So you can see, just with a few gas barrels, we've got way down here. Now if we uh, go ahead and get rid of the rest of this, you'll, you'll probably see there's a couple of layers of gravel and destroyed stone to get through first. So the actual depth, once you've got past the destroy stone, which by the way is a lot easier to destroy than the uh, regular stone, is about here. So you can see that this is uh, this is how deep we managed to get um, doing this. So we actually got way down into the ground here using this technique, which is really awesome. Now, of course, some blocks that fly up into the air will come back and just fall down in here. So you're gonna have a bit of cleaning up to do. But overall, if you just need a deep mine nice and fast, that's the way to do it. Alrighty, we are now back down in the uh, bomb test room, and as you can see, I've got my cage set up there, and I'm stood very far away from this thing, because the, uh, believe it or not, the radius of damage is quite wide. Now, it's probably going to take out all the candles in there, so we're going to have to light it up again once we're done, but I'm going to blow this thing up, and we're going to see how much damage this thing can do, because trust me, it's a lot. You ready? Here we go. Now you can see that it didn't do too much to the steel, like uh, with the regular earth blocks, it didn't take out the steel straight away. However, if we come and look at the steel, you can see that it's done pretty much one and a half thousand block damage um, across the board. And uh, so it looks like it's got, um, here's the center of the explosion right here by the looks of things. And you can see that in the middle two, it will do uh, 1500 damage. Then for that one, it will do a thousand damage. And then from the ones out here, it seems to just uh, not do any damage at all. Um, now that could just be because there's no exposed blocks beyond that point. Uh, let's just check the walls. Has it done any damage to the walls? Nothing to the walls and nothing to the ceiling. So uh, it does appear that the uh, three by three the three by three radius applies. So this is why it does uh, the five, sorry, the five by five, because you can see that the three by three is this square right here. And then the five by five, it does uh, less damage to in the five by five. But after that, it's enough to destroy stone on a second explosion, which is why it would make a five by five by five thing going downwards when you blow up lots of these together. So let me go repair this and then we'll look at TNT. Now the last of these two explosives we're going to look at is the TNT. Now this is pretty much the same as the gas barrel, however the one difference with the gas barrel and the TNTs is that they can't stack on top of each other like the gas barrels can. If you put one on top of another one, the one on top will literally just fall down, go poof and disappear and you'll have wasted 50 gunpowder. And that's right guys, 50 gunpowder. These things are expensive to make. They're not cheap at all. So uh, these better be worth it, right? It's 10 paper and then it's one plant fibers, so not too bad on that. One duct tape, so not too bad on uh, plant fibers and duct tape, but paper and gunpowder costs are humongous. So what we're gonna do is uh, the, uh, the mining thing with TNT is uh, actually not doable. Um, so I was wrong about that, they can't stack. But we're going to put a piece of TNT in here, get the crap out of here, and we're going to test and see how much damage this does. And we'll see if it's any more than the, uh, than the barrels. And we'll see if it's any wider as well. So the barrels did 1,500 uh, within a 3x3, three three, and then 1,000 within a 5x5. Five five. So the TNT... As you can see... The TNT has a much wider area of effect. The entire load of candles have been taken out, like, 
a lot of these have been taken out. Look at the damage on this. So what's happened here then? Let's have a look. So here's the center block. You can see that the TNT is much more powerful, doing like 4,800 damage to uh, the blocks within the immediate 3x3. Three three. Uh, it's even done a little bit more to that one. So uh, you can see that then it does about 3,000 or so to the ones further out. And this concrete, you can see, has you know taken... 1200 points of damage so significant damage has happened to all of these now i think if these candles weren't here then these blocks would have all been damaged some more but you can see just how much more powerful the tnt is compared to uh compared to the gas barrels now tnt is great for mining underground so what we're going to do is we're going to see how much it can destroy underground um this way so let me uh once again open up another window this side and then we'll see how much tnt takes out in comparison to the uh gas barrels Alrighty guys, the TNT is armed up in there. You can hardly see him, but he's in there. So let me just zoom in so I can see him. So you can just see him poking out there. So let's see if we can shoot this thing and blow this up and see if this does any more damage than the gas barrel. I'm thinking it's going to. So let's have a look. And with that, you can see that that is a lot more powerful than the gas barrels. It blew out the entire front part of the concrete here and it's done significantly more damage. Now, the amount that it's destroyed is still within the 3x3x3, three by three by three, apart from, of course, the uh, the concrete bit at the front, by the looks of things. It might have actually been a 3x4x3, three by, by, three, by the looks of things, but you can see that it's very much more powerful than the regular old um, gas barrels over there, which didn't take out anything. So you can see that if you want to create um, some mining tunnels with this, it's going to be a piece of cake. It's going to cost you a load of gunpowder, but it's definitely going to be a piece of cake to create some mining tunnels with this because it does open it up in like a nice 3x3x3 three by three by three kind of area. So it's similar to the gas barrels, but slightly more powerful. So you're going to want to stand back a little bit more when you're using this. But overall, that is awesome. Alrighty guys, finally the last two explosive things we are going to look at is the projectile explosives and these include the exploding crossbow bolt and the rocket. Now to use the exploding crossbow bolt you're going to of course need to have the crossbow and in order to get the crossbow you're going to need to know the crossbow schematic and then craft one. Now the exploding crossbow bolt also has its own schematic so you're going to need to know how to uh, do that as well. And not to mention it's very expensive in terms of resources and it requires steel and it requires calipers as well. So the exploding crossbow is quite a late game item, especially if you didn't have much luck finding calipers. If you've managed to find steel arrowheads around, however, you will be able to use these. So what we're going to do is we are going to have a, uh, a test with the exploding crossbows. Um, and we're going to see how long it takes to take out 10 zombies with exploding bolts. So let's do it. Alrighty guys, here come my horde of 10 zombies. So I'm going to fire some exploding bolts at them and let's see how quickly we can take them out. So you can see one of those bolts knocks about a third of them down. That was really good. So you can see that it's killed three of them with one shot, which is great. So let's fire another lot. And you can see that that sent the two fatties straight down. That was awesome. Next. And that sent those three down. And it looks like, okay, he got stunned. So let's get him. And let's get that guy. So 10 zombies, about five crossbow bolts, unless you can obviously pack them a bit tighter together, will take them down. So next what we're going to do is we're going to try it with a feral and see how many crossbow bolts it takes on a feral to kill him. Alrighty guys, here is our feral. So let's see how many bolts this takes to take him down. So I'm I'm guessing it's probably going to take about 10 of these things. That one didn't do anything to him. Okay, three of them have knocked him down. So let's see if we can get some damage on him. Okay, there's five. So six of these bolts will take down a feral. And don't forget, one of those shots was three times damage. So if we didn't, it would probably take eight or nine without the stun bonus in order to get down a feral. So you can see, very, very powerful. Now I haven't shown you how to craft these things yet, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. So to craft one of these things, um, 
you're going to need to obviously have the schematic for the exploding bolt. Then you're going to need, you're going to need the steel smithing perk too. Um, and then it costs uh, one steel arrowhead, so not much for that. One duct tape, so again, not bad. One wood and one feather. So pretty much the same as a steel crossbow bolt. But then on top of that, slap 25 gunpowder. So if you want to produce these in high numbers, you better have a very good coal and potassium farm going on. Otherwise, you are going to run into a quick shortage of gunpowder when you try and build these en masse. So that is the exploding crossbow bolts. Let's look at the rockets now. Now the rockets, um, you're going to need to know the rocket launcher in order to uh, be able to use these and craft them. Um, let me get out the recipe so you can see what this costs. Now the rocket is a bit more difficult to craft. Now the gunpowder is very high, 50 of those needed for a rocket, and three duct tape, so three times more than for an exploding crossbow bolt. You're also going to need a rocket tip and a rocket casing. And in order to make these, you need to have the tool and die set equipped at your forge, and you need to have read the schematic in order to know how to craft both of these things. But once you've got one of each of those, you can put those all together, and then you can then get yourself a shiny rocket. Now, rockets can also be found in munitions boxes, and I think very rarely in shotgun messiah crates as well. So don't give up finding them and uh, when you have them just uh, keep them stockpiled and you should be able to build up a good supply of rockets so what we're going to do is we are going to spawn in 10 zombies and we're going to uh, have a little bit of fun with the rocket launcher and see how quickly we can take out 10 zombies Alrighty guys, here are our 10 zombie friends. Now the rocket launcher, you're going to want to get a bit further away and just aim and let's fire this thing and see how much it does and you can see one of those rockets took down a good number of them now they are a bit spread out now so let's see if we can take some of these guys out now the rocket launcher does a lot more block damage as well so you can use it to take down buildings just don't let a zombie get right in front of you while you fire it because otherwise you're going to have a lot of problems now unfortunately the horde has spread out a little bit more than i thought it would so let's just go and uh, shoot some of these guys but in a minute we'll do a feral test and just see how uh, we'll just see how much damage it does to a feral so there's them three and did that not even kill them? Now it did. So you can see that the rockets probably do a little bit less entity damage, but we're going to test that out for real. You can see it does a much greater block damage, so in terms of taking out zombies, it's probably better to use it for uh, getting rid of blocks. It could also be that I'm not landing direct hits on them either. So there we go. Got that one, and let's take down the last one. Boom! There we go. So you can see rockets are awesome, and they work very, 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 very well on large groups of zombies, and it just pretty much decimates them. So let's go spawn in a feral, and we are going to test the rocket on a feral. So let's go over here, and let's see how many it takes to kill him. So I'm just going to spawn him in uh, right now. Um, I did get a couple of debuffs on me, so I'm just going to spawn him in. Right, here's Mr. Feral. So let me just fly over this way a bit. Right, here we go. So here comes the feral. Let's see how many rockets it takes to take him out. So it took pretty much, uh, when you don't factor in the stun, it takes eight crossbow bolts. But as you can see, he got stunned on two shots. Okay, I missed that one, so I'm not going to count that one because that's crap aim. So you can see, in about maybe six rockets, it will take down a feral. So the rockets do do more entity damage. It was probably just my bad aim that was meaning that these ones were uh, still alive um, and lasting longer than with the crossbow because the rocket is significantly harder to aim than the crossbow. Now the cool thing is with these rockets you can do uh, you can pretty much wreck buildings with them as well. It doesn't do an insanely high amount of block damage but let's uh, aim one at that window over there see if we can break our way in. So you can see we can just break our way into this building and uh, yeah if you need to break into a building nice and quick just go damage the windows like that and then you'll be able to see pretty much get straight in there and you're good. So you can see that it is sending a few blocks flying. Let's send one up there. Watch. Boom! So it does a very high amount of block damage compared to normal. Now you can also blow up cars with this thing, which is awesome. And that'll send things really flying. So if you need to blow up cars and use cars as a defense, you can. Look at that. <laughs> so when you blow up cars, the rocket launcher then does become pretty much a supercharged weapon of destruction, which is really awesome. And you can see that it doesn't do it doesn't do damage to loads of blocks, 
but it will get blocks out of the way with a couple of rockets and you can easily make your way in to wherever you want to get to. And there goes the passing gas sign. That was brilliant. We knocked it down. Awesome. So that's the rocket launcher for you and it's really fun to use. Let's see if we can knock that lamppost off the top. Nope, didn't destroy it. Let's try the wood. So you can see it's not actually got too high block damage. But there we go. Once you've done enough damage to it, things will fly. And that is that is amazing. So let's let's do the let's do a run on this bunker and see if we can break into it in one uh, in one or two shots. So you can see that it pretty much gets rid of the wood and then yeah, if you've got someone in there, they'll be uh, they'll be dying very quickly. Because uh, rockets uh, rocket damage on players is very high, and you can see I am destroying quite a lot of the building with it. And there you go you can see that it just immediately decimates the building. Now I've only got four health left, so I'm going to stand back a bit. But you can see that it's very good at taking down uh, wooden structures and it just sends things flying. But bear in mind that you are going to summon screamers if you use the rocket continually. But there you go. I managed to take down this entire building's uh, outer layer with the rocket and uh, enough hits on it will eventually destroy it. So. That'd be pretty awesome to watch the whole building fall down. So yeah, if you're up for having some fun with rockets, go for it. I wonder if we can knock this fast and gas down, sign down. Oh, and I died. <laughs> well, there you go. I died. Alrighty guys, so that pretty much concludes the tutorial on all the different types of explosives. So I hope it helps you make a good choice in what explosives you want to use for either base defense, for mining, or just for general zombie slaying. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you next time. So until then, bye!